All the characters of the work are over 18 years old. The story I'm going to tell here concerns my older sister and me. Who am I? Most of you know me or someone like me. I am 29 years old, about 5 feet 11 inches tall. Jogging makes me slim, and many women would say that I look a little better than average. I have brown hair, brown eyes, and weigh about 170 pounds. You can see me every time you go to work or shopping. A decent guy who looks like a lot of other decent-looking guys. With a difference of only a year, as young children, we shared all our fun together. There was a time when we could simultaneously enjoy benches and ladders and other simple children's games. Even Monopoly or Scrabble during heavy snowstorms when we were older. We've always gotten along, like most siblings, although we've had a few years where a true love-hate relationship would best describe our interaction. When Liz turned 11, her and my daily lives diverged noticeably. I think it was around the time our love-hate years began. The love parts were typical. For example, I would protect her if the boy tried to pick on her. We were both quite attentive to gifts for Christmas or birthday. As I said, everything was typical. When I became a teenager, I used to feel awkward with girls. Obviously, some people liked me enough to spend some time with me at a public picnic or a school event, but I didn't have a real date until I turned 16. One day, when I entered my room, Liz was sitting on my bed. When I came in, Liz told me to sit on the edge of the mattress. As soon as I sat down in the place where she had been sitting, Liz said, We are alone. Mom has to buy food. Here are my terms. Look at me for two minutes, and then I'll leave. Nodding stupidly, my posture was as good as possible. I sat up straight as a board. None of us spoke, and I couldn't even move. I was just absorbing every detail I could gather from my information-starved brain. What a beautiful sight. That was the first and last true thought that came to my mind before Liz started grabbing her things. Liz! I shouted to her retreating figure. When she stopped, I said to her back, You are very beautiful. Without a facial expression to guide me, I only knew she was thinking something. But after waiting a few seconds, she headed to her room, closing the door behind her. I've been living my dreams for weeks. My admiration for Liz has never waned. However, gradually the almost obsessive desire to see more of her returned to me. By that time, I already had regular customers for my services. I had to work hard, but it took me less than three weeks to earn another clear $5 bill. The same day I brought it home, I painted glasses on the bill again and then left it on the pillow. That night, I was reading on the bed before going to bed. There was a knock behind me. It was so quiet that at first I wondered if I had actually misheard. Knowing that my parents had gone to bed before I started reading, I crept up to my door rather than speak. It was Liz, holding the door open for her. I looked at her as she quietly walked into my room. Her left hand made a wide gesture, silently inviting me to sit on the edge of my bed. Facing me in a sitting position, Liz looked calm as she stated, Two minutes. Is it okay? Good. I whispered, barely breathing from the anticipatory tension. Watching her delicate watch, Liz gently called time. Tonight, I knew what to expect when Liz came into my room. Let's face it, the first thing you saw must be the best thing you've ever seen. For a few seconds, it seemed that the world had stopped spinning. The crickets fell silent. The owls couldn't hoot anymore. Suddenly, Liz shook her head, straightened up because she had leaned forward a little and then headed for the door. And again, before she could leave my room, my voice cut her off. Liz, it was worth it. You are very, very interesting to look at. Before she could move, I added, Liz, I want to see you again. I've never wanted anything more in my life. At least 20 seconds later, I heard a rather business-like voice reach me. $20. The amount and the opportunity to see her stunned me. When I was in high school, I dated girls from time to time. I had daily expenses. It was a little harder to make money in winter. On the other hand, I was older, bigger, and had clients. Chopping firewood, snow removal, mending fences, all this is a potential income in cold weather. Lawns were a more sustainable business, but there was always something I could find all year round if I hurried. It was funny when I was dating. I was looking at my girlfriend, and then half the time I was thinking about Liz. The 20 bucks I could have parted with took time to put them together. But I did it. Many dreams of what a real girl would look like teased me between the first cent and the last dollar earned to fulfill my fantasy. 
Barely restraining myself, I finally handed the $20 into Liz's soft hands after dinner. I couldn't read her expression when I handed it over. Was she smiling? Was it a crooked smile? Was there irony, fun, subtle celebration? Her thoughts at that moment were a mystery to me. When she finally looked into my eyes, her voice was soft, but her expression remained unreadable. Friday night? That's all she asked. I nodded in the affirmative. It was only Tuesday night, but I learned my lesson. Ask your child on December 22nd how much time is left before Christmas. Three times that's what I felt, impatiently waiting for the clock to finally put me out of my misery. For better or worse, time is finally passing. Friday night came at the speed of a turtle, but the turtle finally crossed the finish line. At about 1900 hours, our parents left for dinner. As soon as they left, my feet headed for Liz's room. Her door was open and she was reading on her bed. Now, is the time what it takes? I asked, trying not to sound as excited as I really was. She nodded in agreement. We both knew what I was asking. However, I couldn't read her almost neutral expression when her eyes met mine. For a while I thought she wouldn't answer. If that's what you want, I don't mind. Give the floor to a woman, but say absolutely nothing. Back in my room, I changed into my pajamas and, as before, sat on the edge of the bed. I was afraid that I might miss at least a second after seeing what I had been trying to imagine for so long. No matter how distracted I was, I knew Liz was giving me a lot more time than the agreed two minutes. Looking calm, as she should, she headed for my door. Liz, right now I can't say anything but thank you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll close your door. As soon as I get to my room, we'll both do the same thing. I didn't get out of bed until Saturday afternoon. I had a date on Saturday night. Thank God we went to the school play. I was so distracted that I wouldn't have made good company. As usual, I was thinking about my girlfriend, but my thoughts kept coming back to Liz. Liz dated two years longer than I did, and more often. How far she went with those boys was a new cause for concern for me. When trying to watch the play, Liz's images displaced the dialogue. By Sunday, when I was finally able to talk to Liz, I was dizzy. First of all, I thought about telling Liz how attractive I find her. Despite the fact that I had more thoughts, more that I wanted to say, the words did not come. Liz felt that I was beating around the bush. She pushed me to throw everything out and get it over with. Thanks to a doctor who heard about the big walleye in our lake, I earned the next extra $20 and a little more during the school holidays four days later. It was good that I was ready to fork out my savings, which I really didn't want to do. By the time I graduated from high school, I decided to have a stash. I exchanged a bent 5 plus one of the miserable 10 that I was paid for a day spent at the lake for a brand new $20. That same night, Jackson with glasses fell into Liz's hands. Since our parents were planning to visit close friends on Sunday afternoon at a small birthday party, we agreed on a time for my lesson. The sound of the engine starting in Dad's Dodge on Saturday afternoon was enough to make my heart beat faster. Finally, they went to the Dobson's party. Liz should be coming to my room soon. A few minutes later, Liz sauntered into my bedroom. I sat down abruptly, silently waiting for her instructions. Get up, Liz asked softly. Liz stood up and walked past me. Come to the bed to see what you wanted. After that, we made love. I briefly left my room a couple of times later that day, once to grab a quick sandwich. But apart from the fact that I told my mom that I had a snack before they returned home, I was too emotionally and physically exhausted to see anyone. Even though I resumed dating the following weekend, I couldn't get Liz out of my head. About three weeks later, I asked Liz to join me for an evening walk. It wasn't unheard of. As we grew up, we went out together once a month or so. Maybe she guessed that I was up to something. Liz didn't say a word as we walked. Finally, the words froze in my head. Liz, like many girls, but you are the woman who attracts me the most. There's something about you that makes you more special than I can describe. I've thought about it a dozen times. Every day since you, she taught me biology. Liz, I think it's obvious that I'm still. I never. Liz, will you teach me the rest? Her pace never changed as we continued our walk. When we reached the huge elm tree that marked a mile from the house, we turned as usual. After a few steps, she took my hand, but remained silent as we walked on. I couldn't think of anything worth saying. 
She didn't say a word, but she didn't scream or say no outright. When we got to the front door, when I turned the handle to open it for Liz, when she came in ahead of me, I heard $100. Without turning back to me, Liz went up to her room. Liz had been gone for a long time before I managed to hobble to my room. Anyone who saw me lying motionless on the bed with my eyes closed would think that I was resting. Nevertheless, my stomach was churning inside, my heart was pounding, and my brain was bursting with activity. When I heard $100, for the tiniest fraction of a second my shocked mind tried to form, you rotten fool. But I interrupted this thought in the middle of a thought. Who was obsessed with whom? I had no idea how unattractive my request could be to Liz. Maybe she absolutely hated these show-and-don't-tell sessions. Maybe she thought I was pathetic or worse. Everything we did happened after I stalled her many times. Maybe, maybe, maybe. In the end, I overcame the fears and doubts that were on the verge of turning me into a complete lunatic. By forcing myself to realize the amazing reality that I was only $100 away from her, with the girl I wanted more than anything in the world, it allowed my mindset to finally come to its senses, plus other things. The school graduation was approaching. I could earn a lot more money in the summer, of course. But in order to get $100 and also stick to my savings goal, I would have to break my hump like never before. Many years ago, I vowed to have a stash to start my business when I graduate. I have to follow my plan. Hey, if I could earn an extra $10 every week, I'd be in heaven in 10 weeks. As my thinking became more logical, I realized that Liz was initiating me, and it was worth a huge ransom. Whatever I had to do, I would do. Having Liz was worth any sacrifice. Let's face it, will 10 times more be able to buy something that will mean as much to me? No way. So now I had a plan. My first decision was to stop throwing the image of Liz out of my head. Later, I could list all the ways I could think of to generate additional income. I won't bore you with listing all the chores I took on, but most of them were jobs with a capital letter. Twelve weeks is what it took me. There was a two-week stretch when it rained damn near every day. And yet the day came when I came home from the bank with a bill in excellent condition with a picture of Mr. Franklin. Drawing old-fashioned glasses on it, I tried to remember... Didn't he invent glasses or something related to glasses? After taking a shower, changing clothes, and generally doing everything possible to look as presentable as possible, I and my $100 went to Liz's closed door. You might have thought that I wouldn't be nervous, but I was nervous terribly. Even my knocking on the door seemed nervous to me. Come in was my answer. When I entered, I noticed Liz on the old armchair where she spent most of her time reading. I carefully placed the decorated $100 face up. Her expression wavered. I knew that the tiny glasses I had drawn had noticed. We hadn't said a word about our conversation three months ago. My conscience made me talk. I love you. That evening we made love again. Although it was a cool, dreary, rainy late August night outside, I was as bright and joyful as I had never felt before. Our parents have just left for the gym in Plainfield. After dinner, they stayed to give speeches and chat with local political supporters. Since the trip to the meeting will take almost an hour in one direction, they will obviously be absent until the morning. Three days earlier, Liz had casually mentioned that tonight was the time to wrap things up. She was so poised, as if she assumed it would be a good night to help me balance my checkbook. Who knows, maybe it meant a little more to her. It definitely meant a lot to me. The start time was not mentioned and I was too nervous to insist on details, so I just took a shower and put on some perfume before my parents left. After changing into nice pants and an iron shirt, I waited impatiently in my room for the development of events. Time was distorted for me so much that every minute dragged on with painful slowness. I left the door open, deciding to read a new science fiction book. I just accepted the fact that no matter how many times I read the first page, I won't remember what was written there tonight. Fortunately, when I put the paperback book on the headboard, the beautiful Liz appeared in the doorway in a simple but adorable dress. I got out of bed too fast, desperate to appear grown up. Calm and collected, my voice betrayed my true concern when he croaked. Come in, please. As usual, I couldn't understand much from her slight smile or her few words. Since I was clearly glued to my seat, Liz came over to me, hoping she wouldn't feel my hands shaking I did my best. That evening, the same thing happened that had been happening all along. 
At least this time, I was aware when she left the room. Too tired to lift my head, at least I could hear her going to the bathroom. Opening my eyes, I smiled at her beautiful face. Are you among the living again? She asked. I nodded in the affirmative, although perhaps a little more lazily than I intended. Liz turned to leave. She stopped in the doorway and turned to me. Looking slightly worried, she asked, Is there anything you regret tonight? I didn't have to think this time. I said no. I have nothing to regret. Meeting my gaze, but without losing her rhythm, Liz simply replied, $150. Before my chin stopped dropping, she turned and headed for her bedroom. By the time I went to the door to close it, Liz was already in her bedroom with the door closed. Crawling into bed, I felt too good to be depressed. It took me all summer to earn $100. Will I be young enough to make love by the time I earn $150? Somehow, I must succeed. I felt very motivated and also very pleased with myself. So soon I fell asleep with a smile on my face. The next morning, I did something I hadn't done in years. I was sitting on the same side of the table as Liz. I hadn't thought about it until then, but we'd been sitting on opposite sides of the dining table for years. Liz smiled broadly when I sat down next to her. What's the occasion? She grinned, feigning ignorance. Maybe I've decided you're not such a pain anymore. I whispered so that only she could hear me. Whispering back, she teased, before you get any splinters, I'm telling you now, you can't afford it. I almost coughed up the milk I was drinking through my nose. Seriously, would you like to go to the cinema together next weekend? It's a Dutch treat, I'll even drive the car, so there's enough gas for me. Well, there is something very special that I plan to save up for, but yes, I think it would be nice for me to spend the evening with you. The even bigger smile I got made my day wonderful. I had a bunch of random assignments over the coming week. I earned more than average. Because of this busy schedule, the days passed quickly, and I slept soundly every night. On Saturday afternoon, I arrived home at about 1,600 hours. The day before, I went to the bank to put most of the money I earned during the week into my savings account. I put $11 in an already empty cigar box in my special fund. I left $8 in my wallet for the night. By 1,700 hours, I took a shower, cleaned myself up, got dressed and sat down at the dining table. By 5.30 p.m., Liz and I were already in her car and had just pulled out of the driveway. Before we go too far from home, are you sure you brought your money? It's going to be a long way home, and I want to do a six-hour show so we can get out early in case we figure out something interesting to do later. Unbuttoning my pocket, I felt for my wallet, so I assured Liz that I was ready to go. Are you absolutely sure? Because if you're wrong, you know you'll never hear the end, she teased me. To put an end to Liz's whining, I decided to wave my eight bucks in her face. I opened my wallet and froze. My eight dollars was there, all safe and sound. But I also found two fives, two twenties, and a hundred dollar bill. They're all new, and each one is a picture of a president with glasses. I recognized my work. Liz has kept all the bills I've ever given her. We never got to the cinema that night. Liz earned herself $150 before we got home. Liz comes for one or two weekends every month. I have a guest room just for her. When she arrives, she will find two fives, two twenties, and a hundred dollar bill on the pillow. They are not so clear anymore. They've been handled many times since I first brought them home from the bank, but each bill has a picture of the president with a pair of glasses painted on it. End.